the, the gap between print design and what's possible in uh, graphics editors like Photoshop and Illustrator and InDesign and the web, the gap between these two, has been getting smaller and smaller over the last few years. But the truth is that the gap has always been small. It's just taken us an awful lot of time to pay attention to the parts of the web that make it smaller. Now, when it comes to CSS, the gap has been made smaller throughout the last few years by, by introduction of features like CSS shapes, which allow us to create non-rectangular layouts on the web, and then the introduction of CSS blend modes, which enable us to do a lot of color compositing and blending to create some really interesting effects as well. And then there's CSS filters that enable us to do even more Im image editing right in the comfort of, of our code editors. Now, today there are 11 filter effects, uh, filter effects possible that do a range of things from blurring to changing color contrast and saturation and stuff like that. And one particularly interesting CSS filter function is the URL function, which allows us to import even more powerful filter effects from SVG. Now, it's true that CSS has made the gap smaller between print design and web design, but this, the truth is that this gap has always been small long before these features were added to CSS. SVG, which has been around for two decades, has always had uh, the ability to produce literally Photoshop-grade effects straight in the browser using code, as you're going to see in this talk. Uh, in fact, CSS filters are actually imported from SVG. They are a more optimized, fairly more optimized version of SVG filter effects, but they are very limited and they don't do as much as SVG filters do. So for example, it's currently possible to blur an object using the CSS blur function. Uh, in the image above, we're blurring the image by an amount of six pixels. This creates a uniform blur effect along the X and Y axes applied in both directions on the image. But this function is very limited compared to the original filter function that it was imported from, which is the SVG filter function, which allows us to blur an image either uniformly, just like we do in CSS, or apply a one-directional blur effect, horizontal or vertical, which, think about the horizontal one, when combined with other filter effects available in SVG, can allow us to create motion blur effects and more complex stuff like that. The ability to apply a blur in one direction only is available in SVG, but it's not available in CSS. Plus, almost all of the CSS filter functions have to do with image color manipulation and pixels, not really a lot more, whereas SVG filters are capable of far, far more, as you're going to see in this talk. Um, so, but believe me, by the end of this talk, I will only have scratched the surface of what's possible with SVG filters. So let's jump right in. Uh, filters in SVG are created using the filter element. Filter elements are never rendered directly. Their usage is only as something that can be referenced using the filter property. So you define a filter inside of the filter element, and then in order to see that effect, you have to apply it to something by calling it using the filter attribute on an image, for example, in this case here. The reason for that is that a filter requires a source image to work on, and unless you explicitly define the source image by calling the filter on that source image, then it won't have anything to render, and so it doesn't. Now, a filter effect is made up of a series of operations that are applied to a given source graphic in order to produce a modified graphical result. Each filter element, uh, don't worry about this code, you're not, you're not supposed to be able to read all of it. Uh, so each filter element contains a set of filter primitives as its children. All of them are prefixed with FE. FE is short for filter effect, which is very um, convenient. Each filter primitive performs a single fundamental graphical operation to one or more inputs, producing a graphical result. Now, the result from one filter primitive can be used as an input to another filter primitive or to more than one filter primitive. So this means that there is an almost endless combination of filter effects that you can create and an endless set of possible effects, generally speaking, on the web that you can create using SVG filters. Now, in this talk, I will cover two main examples that show us the power of SVG filters, but again, like I said, these are only two examples. There's a lot more possible. I want to focus on how SVG filters can be compared to Photoshop, a process in Photoshop, how you can recreate Photoshop stuff inside of the browser. So I'm gonna start with how you can apply, use an image, an image of a texture, uh, and then use it to change the texture and generally like change an element using that texture. In particular, I want to create this effect that I borrowed from a Photoshop tutorial that I found on YouTube because I'm not a designer. I don't know how to do this in YouTube, so I had uh, on in Photoshop, so I had to find a tutorial and then do it in code. 
Um, in the video, the designer created this effect by using what is known as a displacement map. Just a quick de definition. A displacement map is an image whose color information is used to distort the content of another element. So you have an image, the colors in those image will be used to distort the content of another element. Now, in Photoshop, the steps to create that effect are, look like this. So you start with an image, you blur it by one pixel, I'll talk about why, you desaturate the image, turn it into black and white, and then you save it as a displacement map. After that, you reuse the original image because you want it to be there as a background, then you add some text, um, position it any way you want, and then the designer is doing a little bit of talking here, we're just gonna skip over it shortly. Now you need to apply that image as a distortment, uh, distortment distortion map. So this is exactly what he's doing here. You specify the X and Y scale, we'll talk about that later, and then you choose the image that you want to use as a displacement map, which is the image that we saved before, and as soon as you apply it, see how the text took the shape of the fabric behind it? Uh, this is possible in SVG, and of course the designer here does a little bit of tweaking because the text needs to look like it's actually blended, so we will do a little bit of color blending using blend modes as well. So just to recap, you uh, desaturate the image, reduce the amount of detail in it by blurring it by one pixels. Why? Because if you have too much detail, the effect is not gonna be realistic anymore. If you have too little detail, it's also not gonna be realistic anymore. So you'd need just enough blurring, and usually somewhere between 0.5 and one pixels, maybe even two pixels, depending on the image, is more than enough to get a more realistic effect. You save it as a displacement map, you create the text, apply a distortion filter using the image as a displacement map, reuse the original image as a background behind the text, then refine the effect more by adding transparency and blend modes to the text. In SVG terms, let's see how that translates. So in SVG, we fill the filter region, which is our SVG, with the image that will be used as a texture using the image primitive. We desaturate the image using the color matrix primitive with the value saturate. We apply a one pixel Gaussian blur to the image using the Gaussian blur filter. We use the image to distort the text using the displacement map filter. We blend the text into the background using the blend primitive, which is for blend modes, and apply a translucent effect or make it semi-transparent uh, semi using the component transfer to make the effect look more realistic. And then we display the text and the image behind it, because we need both of them, by merging the two layers using the merge primitive. So we'll start by translating that into code and see the result of each step as we go. So I have an SVG, inside of an SVG I have a filter element. The filter element has an ID because I want to reference it somewhere else on the image. I start by adding the image, my texture, using the FE image filter primitive. After that, I desaturate the image using color matrix. Now, the type saturate is a shortcut for the color matrix. A color matrix uh, primitive usually expects you to give it a, a matrix, literally a matrix, like in mathematics, but there are certain types that are available as shortcuts, so you don't have to write the matrix completely. Uh, so in this case, I, if I use the type saturate and give it the value zero, this means that I'm desaturating the image, making it black and white. Um, after that, I decrease the level of the details by taking in the image. Uh, notice how I named the result of the color matrix. I give it the name image, and then I use that image as an input for the Gaussian blur, added 0.5 Gaussian blur to it, and give the result a name map. This is what I would have at this point. I have a texture, slightly blurred, turned into black and white. Next, I want to use that texture as a displacement map on the text. So I start with text, and then I create this a filter effect, and I want to apply the filter to the text. So the, filter, the displacement map primitive takes in two inputs. The source graphic, which is my text, what I'm applying it to, and then the map, which I'm gonna be using as a displacement map. N2 is used as a displacement map to N in this case. You specify the scale and X and Y channel selectors, which is outside of the scope of this talk, but you basically specify how much, how strong you want the effect to be when it's applied to the text. At this point, what's rendered on the SVG is going to look like this. So the text looks distorted, but it doesn't really make anything up here without the texture in the background. So next, I need to display the texture as a background behind the text again, and that can be done by using the image primitive one more time. This means that I'm drawing that image again. Uh, I want to enhance the effect a little bit at this point, so I increase the contrast on the image using the component transfer primitive with the type gamma. There are different types. We'll, I'll show another type later. 
Um, the type gamma can be used to control the intensity and the contrast of the colors. Increasing the amplitude attribute increases the intensity of the colors, and increasing the exponent value intensifies the dark areas, and combined together, the contrast is increased. So we end up with our original image with a little bit more contrast, and next, we need to reapply the text on that image, but first, uh, I'm using the color matrix in order to decrease the opacity on the text. If you look at the value inside of the color matrix at the bottom right, the 0 0.9, that's the value of the opacity inside of this color matrix. By default, it's 1. I decreased the opacity a little bit, so I set it to 0 0.9. And then we blend the text with the background using the multiply blend mode, using the FE blend primitive. And then we render both the text and the image behind it by merging them using the merge primitive. The merge primitive contains merge nodes, which are literally layers that you want to put on top of each other. So in this case, I have my text and I have my background, and I want to put them on top of each other. And so we end up with this. This is pretty cool and straightforward. I oh, thank you. I also used this technique in another demo that I, was, uh, that I worked on, which I wanted to uh, replicate the effect of painting on a wall. So I got a wall texture, and I got some text on, that I applied the wall texture to, and then with a little bit of tweaking, I got painted text on a wall using SVG, which is pretty cool. Next, I want to talk about duotone image effects. Uh, again, we're going to see how an effect that can be created in Photoshop and then how it can be created using SVG filters, usually in similar steps and in a very similar process. So to create a duotone effect in Photoshop, you usually go through two steps. You turn the image into grayscale, and then you map the grayscale range into a range that, instead of having black and white on either end, it has two different colors that you want to use instead of black and white. So in other words, you will need a gradient map that the browser, or Photoshop in this case, will use to map your grayscale image into. As you can see here, the gradient in this case, instead of having black and white on both ends, it has this blue and the green on both ends. So how do you create a, gra a graded map using SVG? Uh, we can use, in order to do that, we use the component transfer primitive again, but with a different type, which is table. So component transfer with the type table allows you to specify two colors, the two colors that you want to use as a graded map inside of the table values attribute for each of the RGB channels. So component transfer allows you to manipulate every component, the R, the G, the B, of colors inside of an element, whatever that element is. So we need to provide the RGB for the two colors that we want to use as a gradient map. Um, the gradient map and creation with a component transfer is best explained with an example. So suppose we want to create a duotone image using the following two colors for a gradient map. Don't mind the handwriting, it's really bad. On a, uh, I, I write better on paper, but this is iPad. So each of these colors is made from a combination of R, G, and B channels. We want to get those RGB values and then use them in the table values attribute from before. But the RGB values of colors are usually going to be in the range between 0 and 255. And the values inside of the table values attribute need to be fractions. So to fill the values in the RGB filter, uh, we need to get the RGB values and divide them by 255. This is an, an, uh, an app on iPad, so to the right I have the RGB of the pink color, and then if I divide them by 255, I get the RGB values that I'm going to use and the table values. This is what, would, what it would look like in code. Uh, ignore the first part the, for the color matrix for now. If you look at the component transfer, I have RGB for the pink and RGB for the yellow, and this effectively creates a gradient map. Now, um, in the first part of this code, in the color matrix, as we did in, uh, in Photoshop, you turn the image into black and white, and then you map the black and white into two new colors. So this is exactly what I did here. In this case, the color matrix has a type matrix, um, which means that you have to give it a matrix. Uh, if you use a matrix that lo looks like this, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 for all the RGB channels, you're effectively turning that image into grayscale. And then you take that grayscale image and you apply the component transfer to it with these two color values, which means that the browser is going to map the black and white to these two. And as soon as you do that, you end up with this result. Now, this looks OK. Thank you. <laughs> Now, this looks okay, but the image could use a little bit of tweaking. In particular, it would be nice if we made the highlights shine a little bit more and the darker areas darker because it looks washed out a little bit at the moment. So we can do that by, again, using the component transfer with the type gamma, which controls the uh, contrast, as we sh showed in the previous example. 
So increasing the exponent makes the darker areas darker, while increasing the amplitude makes the lighter areas shine more, and this in turn increases the overall contrast. So by increasing the contrast, we get the following result, which looks a lot better. So as you can see, you can basically, literally, recreate Photoshop effects using SVG filters in the browser today. And one thing that I, most of the developers that, I get, that get excited about this, most of them come up to me and usually say, what do you think about recreating the whole Photoshop in the browser? <laughs> that would be cool, sure, but unfortunately, there are still a lot of stuff that we cannot do with SVG filters. Um, there was one particular effect that I was interested in that I could not replicate using SVG filters, so there is that. Um, but we can recreate enough for us to get as creative as we want on the web today using SVG. And there are a few people who are already getting creative. Uh, my favorite experiments are those created by Yoxel on CodePen. She has a collection of many effects created using SVG filters, specifically noise generation to create textures. So, not only can you use a texture to apply it to some element, you can also generate textures in SVG. You can generate fire textures, clouds, water, smoke. You can do that. So we have a, you have, we have a filter primitive that generates noise, and then you apply lighting effects, because we have lighting effects in SVG, and then you manipulate the colors a little bit from here and there, make it smoother. You end up with a lot of amazing textures that you can also then use and apply them on other elements. So like I said, the combinations of things that you can do are almost endless. So what I'm hoping is that this talk has opened up your imagination to the possibilities and has maybe excited you to start your own little experiments. Um, so if you do, please uh, share what your work, the things that you create with the community. Um, everyone would be very much excited to see what you come up with. Um, I look very, for very much, I look forward to seeing what you create. Thank you very much. <laughs>